Hey, I was making a joke. Oh, but we were both making a good joke. I was gonna say tomato, tomato, but both would be good in a frittata. And he was gonna say one man's garbage is another man's frittata. Please weigh in in the comments below, which is a better joke. Yeah. <laughs>Welcome to Home Movies. I'm Allison Roman. Today we're gonna to be making a frittata. And I know what you're thinking, a frittata? Do you really need a video for that? And some of you might, but I think for me more of this video is about the possibilities of a frittata. There are as many frittatas as there are days in the year. It's my new calendar, 365 frittatas. <laughs> if you think frittatas are boring or basic, I sympathize, I empathize, I relate. I was once like you and I also thought frittatas were boring, maybe like a throwaway food, maybe too basic. But it wasn't until I went camping, I was camping, that I made a frittata that I really fell just so deeply in love with. It felt like how could I have gone so many years without constantly making one of these to have in my house at all times. It was it was like a perfect food. It traveled well, it sustained me, it felt nutritious, it felt fun to eat, it was easy to make, uh, and it looked beautiful. I was like, why am I not making frittatas all the time? And now I do. <laughs> and that could be you too. And that could be, that could be you too, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Who's hot for frittatas? This girl. This one is gonna be based on the recipe that I made for myself when I was camping. Again, camping that was basically just full of kale. And I know what you're thinking, frittata, boring, but okay. And then I was like, kale, and you were like, I'm out of here. But hear me out, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna char the kale. I'm not like other kale, I'm a charred kale. And I started thinking about frittatas and it made me think of my friend Sam, who is not a cook by trade, but is probably the most enthusiastic frittata person I know. For whatever reason, I hear the word frittata, I think my friend Sam. So we're gonna talk to her about what makes a great frittata. I want to talk about a frittata real quick. Yes. So the reason I wanted to call you is because I feel like a lot of people make frittatas, whatever, yeah. like in their life. But I feel like you, to me, are synonymous with frittata. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like you, so you're nice. an excellent home cook. You're constantly cooking. You have a garden, if I'm not yes. mistaken. And so yeah, we do. I feel like I don't know if the term garbage frittata predated your garden? Because I'm like, is it really a garbage frittata if it's, kind of, if it's like fresh vegetables from your garden? That's kind of okay, well, b on that, but. Here's where the garbage comes in. Okay. So my wife and I are very different people. I am a, like the minute something is even a tiny bit pliable, I throw it away. Great. And my wife is like, I will eat that green thing covered in slime no matter what. So it truly is, I do go to the bottom of the vegetable drawer okay. and like go through what's in there and put, I won't use the most disgusting things because I've had E. coli before and I don't want to <laughs> Oh, do I, read, I read all about it. And I feel like I know, I really know that you had E. coli. I, <laughs> yeah. I got it. I read it. I, that, got it. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Yeah. I hate a lot of people I wouldn't wish to lie on anyone yeah. so I don't want to uh put anyone else through that so I kind of find things that are kind of rotten but not like you know penicillin yeah rotten. are we talking so like, like from our garden but like was pulled months ago right are we talking like she's the kind of person that like when you eat dinner and there's like a tablespoon of something, she'll put it in a very small Tupperware or like yes. the mini Ziploc bags or whatever to be like, yes. I'll find a use for something. And then she doesn't, but you will. Yes. Yeah. I never saw, you know, those little like one inch by one inch cube containers. I have never had seen those until we lived together because I, I mean, I have been known to flush like half a pot of soup down the toilet. Right. like. When I'm done with the thing, I'm done with it. But, like, I definitely won't save any, like, bits and pieces. And she's the person who's like, oh, there's two tablespoons of salsa. No. <laughs> I've never <laughs> eaten that little of something. So I, too, have never had a need for those containers. Um, oh. So I get that. But, like, what if I'm you... a person, like, if there's a little bit left, I even to my own detriment, I'll just shove it in. I'm like, I'll eat it. Don't have you have that. you had I'll any just... garbage frittata experiences where you're like, wouldn't it put that in? Like, wouldn't it made that choice again? Or are you kind of always happy with what you're doing? 
I'm usually happy. The things, the one, the one frittata that didn't really work for me was I tried to use an old sweet potato, and it hadn't been pre cooked. Oh no! And and I didn't cook it. No. As long I cooked it, so I all the vegetables that have to be cooked in butter for me for a frittata. Yeah. Um, I don't believe in an olive oil frittata. I'm so okay. sorry. That's fine. Um, Agree to disagree. I cooked it with a sliced red onion, and that potato did not soften up. But everyone who ate it pretended to like it. <laughs> that's that's. I feel like I yeah I can relate to that. <laughs> but I like to make a frittata. Like, I like to cook it hard. Like, it has to go through the broiler at the end to, like, be very firm. You want bounce in that frittata. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. I want to be able to throw the frittata on the floor and it stays in one piece. I love that. Well, I'm making a kale frittata. Was it the one from your newsletter? Because that yeah. looked so good. Yeah. And I think that we have, we're, like, very aligned at least in the like I use olive oil but that's because what I had but I would totally use butter and olive mm-hmm. oil combo but like I really cook the hell out of the onions and the kale like they are charred yeah. it's called a charred kale frittata for a reason mm-hmm. and I feel like I'm normally like a briefly sauteed kale person but this one it's like no like we are cooking the out of this kale and that translates to like a very complexly flavored frittata which I feel like you'd really enjoy yeah I wish more than anything that I was there right now. <laughs> well, I, if I had like a gold belly service or something, I would send it to you. Um, but I don't. Next time I'm in New York, I'm going to come to your apartment. Please do. If you ever come to New York and don't call me, I will take it personally. So. No, you should. See you soon. Bye. Bye. We interrupt this presumably very hilarious frittata video to bring you a special word from a terrific sponsor and that is Grey Poupon. And if you know me, you know that I love mustard. I feel passionately about it. Probably second only to wine. So imagine my delight when Grey Poupon informed me that they're making wine. No, your eyes do not deceive you. This is a wine with a label on it that looks like Grey Poupon, but it's not. It is, however, infused with mustard seeds because Grey Poupon is made with wine, but they were like, what if wine, but with mustard? Let's see what they did. And if you're wondering, no, this wine does not taste like mustard. It's more like a secret between you and the wine. A little wink, a little mustard seed wink. Basically, the moral of the story is we should not be afraid to have a little wine with lunch. I know that I am probably preaching to the choir here, but to me, like a very casual lunch of a fat slice of frittata with like a really lemony salad and just like a small amount of wine, a responsible amount of wine, feels like a really good way to be like, you know what? It's not Tuesday, it's Saturday and I'm on vacation. You can go to greatpouponwine.com to get your bottle, but you have to act fast because I regret to inform you, these wine bottles are in limited production. <laughs> so uh, run, don't walk. I feel like Bill Murray in Lost in Translation. <laughs> Centauri times. <laughs> um, Grey Poupon times. I'm gonna use the whole leaf of the kale and the stem. I do that for two reasons. Well, one, when I was camping, did I mention I went camping? It's because I didn't wanna waste anything. We didn't have a grocery store to go to, and so it was sort of like, all right, well, we better use the whole vegetable. But I think that it's like, you know, a good way to live your life anyway, and I like the kale stem. I think it tastes really good. But in the context of this frittata, it gives you a lot of texture, which is nice. And you know that I love texture. In the spirit of Sam and her garbage frittata, I am gonna use this weird half of an onion and this weird peeled shallot I have. I don't put anything raw into a frittata. Like say I was making like a caramelized fennel frittata. That sounds really good. I would caramelize the fennel first and then I would add the eggs. This is what cooking is. The game is to work with the bowl that I've chosen for myself, which is obviously too small for this task, but I have too much pride to get a new bowl. I also love kale. And I feel like kale like had a moment where people realized it was delicious. And then there was like a kale backlash. Kale is versatile and has never asked a thing of anybody. It is just trying to exist as a hearty, delicious, nutritious green. And people are out there in the streets saying, kale is over, is kale even that good? Kale is just trying to be out here feeding you something good to eat, I don't know. Um, I'm cutting these onions and shallots a bit on the thick-ish side because I want them to hold up. I'm not looking to caramelize them. I'm just looking to cook them hot and fast. Okay, I'm gonna start this frittata 
just like I would if I were camping, which I've done before. So I'm starting with a 10 inch cast iron skillet. You don't have to use a cast iron skillet, I just like to. I feel like it gets really evenly hot. Um, you're able to char the vegetables in it really, really well without worrying about scorching your pan. But if you only have a stainless steel skillet, that also works. The kale we're gonna char over high heat, but once we add the eggs, we're gonna turn things down to medium high. And the reason being is that we don't want the onions and the bits that sink to the bottom of the frittata to get too, too scorched. And we'll start with about two tablespoons of oil on the bottom. We may add another tablespoon later, just around the edges when we add the eggs. Anytime I'm cooking with kale stems and the leaves, I always try and add stems first, just to give them a little head start. We're not trying to get them like super, super tender. It's just that if we added these at the same time, these would still maybe be a little too al dente um, by the time the leaves were where we wanted them. Our oil is now shimmering, which means it's time to add the onions. So I'm gonna not stir these too, too much. I just want them to be like deeply browned and almost like I'm frying them. Someone asked me the other day what the difference between a quiche and a frittata was, and the difference is that a quiche has a crust and the filling is a custard, basically. It's mostly dairy with not that much egg, or not as much as a frittata. It's very decadent, it's very rich, it's very tall, it's baked in a pan, and a frittata is just all egg. A frittata is just like a baked egg dish. No crust needed. So these are like lovely and brown. Come, Dennis. See how they're like, frizzled and fried at the end. That's what we want. They're not like softened or jammy or caramelized. They're like lightly fried. We'll add the kale stems. Whisking eggs is like actually kind of annoying. Like breaking up that white. Like you do need like a bit of elbow grease. Salt helps break up the protein. I'm not gonna add any salt yet until we are ready to add it to the, the skillet. I'm gonna add about half of this kale. And I know it looks very full, but the kale is gonna shrink down. And we're not looking to like gently wilt it, we're looking to actively char this kale. So I'm gonna stop moving it so that can happen. But I kind of like to just scoop all like the smaller bits of things on top. I could remove it, but that just feels fussy. So I'm not gonna touch that for like another 30, 60 seconds. This is something that I like to eat with eggs in general, but especially because I don't necessarily feel like frittatas need cheese, but I do like it when they have a bit of something creamy on the side. Full fat yogurt, aioli, mayonnaise, sour cream. It's kind of just like you're making like a makeshift sauce here. When the kale starts to char, you can actually smell it. It smells like roasted broccoli or something like that. Like all brassicas, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, kale, cauliflower, have like a very familiar smell when they are really, really browning which I happen to absolutely love. This is just yogurt, garlic. I'll season it with some lemon juice. I'm surprised I don't have some of this just like on hand right now because it's something that I use for eggs and for vegetables and for snacks and for dinner and for breakfast. All right, see the color on the kale like this? That's exactly what we are looking for. Yeah, you don't want to fuss with it too much. You want to like let the kale char without moving it and tossing it frequently. I know it looks like a lot, and that's because it is. The second batch you add will inherently get a little less charred than the first, so that's okay, as long as a lot of it is. Um, I'm also gonna serve this with some little lettuce greens because, because uh, health, yeah, but also I just think like a really nice lemony, like peppery salad mix. Ooh, there's flowers in this one. Um, it's just like a really nice way to enjoy eggs and yogurt and general. So before these go in, I'm gonna season with salt and pepper as well. Eggs, just like pasta when you cook it in water, this is sort of like your opportunity to cook them, or season them rather. So you'll see it start to set and coagulate around the ends there. So yeah, like a medium high heat. We'll just season these greens with some lemon, some salt. Um, and you can finish your frittata two ways. You can finish it in the oven, or if you're camping, which again, I've done, put a plate on top, flip it, and then put it back in the skillet, almost like an upside down cake or a frittata, like not a frittata, it is a frittata. Almost like an upside down cake or a tortilla, Española, that's how you would make that. Uh, I'm gonna put this in the oven. Don't look at that pie. <laughs> different day, different shoot. These are just gonna go on our salad and on top of the frittata. 
Not necessary, none of this is necessary. It's really about the frittata. This is just what I happen to want to eat this frittata with. It's been about five to eight minutes uh, of oven time with the frittata. Um, and now we're gonna take it out, we're gonna flip it, and it's gonna finish cooking on the top. It's definitely set around the edges. It's just a little raw in the center. If you had a broiler, that would fix this, but I don't. Um, I tried, I think it's broken. Okay, so the stove is off. I'm putting the plate on top of the frittata. Put your hand on the plate. And hope for the best. We got some sticky. Okay, almost. It stuck a little. Remember how I was like, eggs need oil? I forgot to put oil on the bottom. I'm a little annoyed with myself. This is like the second time I f***ed up this frittata. Cool. This is gonna go back in. We're sliding it in like this. And that's just gonna cook the rest of the frittata. And that's about a minute. It doesn't need much more time than that. Now that's a frittata. That's what I should have, what should have happened on that underside. You see what I mean? You see the difference? It's actually good for you to see. You see how on the underside it looked like a little dry and like dull and like kind of like charred and not golden. This is like beautiful and golden and shiny and like delicious looking. Honestly, frittata is best when you give it a minute to sit. I don't love like a hot frittata. Hot frittata. And to serve, I'll just squeeze some lemon over these greens. Nope, not what I wanted to happen at all. He's missing. Missing, frittata tip. I need leads, greatly appreciated. Oh my God, flowers, cute. Oh my God, call me a bistro, cause I just did a bistro thing. Okay, I'm gonna eat this frittata like I'm starving. Like I haven't been eating all day. Like I didn't eat two pieces of pizza for lunch. Mm. Honestly, I'd probably be a lot less tired if I ate this for lunch instead of that pizza. It's so good. It really tastes like wildly complex and filling and like warming and I feel like I could go hiking now. Thank you to Grey Poupon for sponsoring this video. God, I love jock jams. Boy, did I love jock jams. Not much of a jock, love the jock jam.